Hello everyone. In the uh, last couple of lectures, uh, we, uh, we, were, we had just started about the uh, physical design flow and uh, we had stopped at a point where we had to, uh, uh, we had to uh, define the locations of pre-placed cells. Also, I gave you a brief introduction of uh, pre-placed cells. What does it mean? And, and, we were, uh, and we will be concluding the concept of pre-placed cell uh, in this lecture. We'll try to conclude the concept of pre-placed cell in this lecture, though it's a deep, uh, it's, it, it, it requires even more uh, deep discussion which which we will be taking further in separate uh, uh, set of videos where we will be understanding why there is a section where uh, we have uh, decided to introduce why to do all these steps in that section we will be discussing even more about preplaced cells but uh, to give a brief intro introduction we will start from where we had stopped last time so what we said is we have a combinational logic and we uh, and uh, we divided into two two cuts we, let's say this combinational logic we have broken into two parts and that two parts are decided by a cut that we give in between the combinational logic and the cut one becomes one set of uh, becomes a block and the cut to becomes uh, becomes uh, become second block and, and also we discuss the pins of the block the you, you see the yellow lines over here this becomes the output pins of block 1 and 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 the yellow lines over here they become the input pins of block 2 so these two blocks are like they are they, they will be uh, treated as two independent blocks so let's let's study this block uh, uh, for a more detail so we have these two blocks uh, we separated our combinational logic into separate blocks and now what we'll do is we'll extend the IO pins so we already have the output pins of block 1 and which is the input pins of block 2 we'll extend these pins and there is one output pin over here from the output of A8 so we'll extend them and see let's see what happens so this is this is what uh, th this will be block 1 and this will be the block 2 block 1 will have four input pins and four output pins over here similarly block 2 will have four input pins and one output pin and now let's uh, let's uh, let's color them let's uh, fill up uh, this particular boxes with some colors let's say i'll just black box them so this is what this is what it will uh, look like so we have two black boxes with us and each box has got some internal logic and then this black boxes will be separated uh, will be separated out as two different ips something like this so this this is the these are the final blocks that we have now, uh, this particular block will have four input pins A, B, C, D and four output pins O1, O2, O3, O4. Block 2 will be having four input pins A, B, C, D and one output pin O. So, these two blocks by themselves can be reused every time. So, we did not make this uh, uh, make this block again and or build this block again and again. This block is once built, constructed. And, and kept separately and whenever you need this whenever you need this section of the logic or this kind of logic you won't uh, you won't uh, build the hardware again and again you will just reuse this hardware every time it's just like uh, uh, let's say for example we can take an example of a, um, what do you say we can take an example of a, um, of, of, a, of a chair let's say of a chair okay you have you have drawn the uh, you have drawn the uh, uh, design of one particular chair on a paper so for with that particular design you can make multiple chairs you need not redraw the design every time very similarly you need not redraw the circuit every time we can uh, take a, let's say another example for example let's say let's say a plastic bag okay a plastic bag you have plastic bag you will use it uh, let's say for carrying fish for one time second time you can uh, remove this fish and you can use the same plastic bag for something else so this is an this is an example of reusable things so in a digital world we call it as ips this is called as intellectual properties so these blocks can be reused every uh, any time and n number of times you can use these blocks in your circuit design so that that is basically your ips or modules or so this this, this the placement of these blocks in the design that we refer to as pre-placed cells so why the name pre-placed it is because before we do the actual before we do the actual placement and routing of the tool of the of the circuit by some automated tools the locations of this IPs will be fixed that's why it is the, that why the that why this is placed before your before your placement routing happens that's why we call it as pre-placed cells so there are other IPs also available. For example, let's say you have a memory. You need not rebuild the memory again and again. You have just a mem you have just built one memory once, and you can reuse every time. We have let's say clock gating cell. 
we have a comparator for example we have uh, something called as mux dmux and there and there are a lot of examples any, any logic basically any, any logic which you feel like it will be used again and again for example let's say clock divider you always need a clock divider uh, for dividing your uh, dividing your clock so that particular thing can be built separately uh, in a separate uh, uh, in a, in a separate way and that could, could be reused multiple times so these are the examples of ips and these these complex cells are what, what we do is we we place them we place them in our floor i'll be introducing to the one floor plan i'll i'm just uh, giving a brief uh, uh, update about floor plan so uh, while we design the floor plan we fix the locations of these ips because these ips communicate with the let's say, let's say an ip let's say uh, this memory communicates with the input pins a lot so what we'll do is we'll place this memory close to the input pins and and we fix fix the location of that particular memory that's why they are called as pre placed cells and uh, so yeah just i introduced you to the term floor planning the arrangement of these ips uh, are uh, on, on a chip is referred to as floor plan so floor plan is basically the very initial uh, what we are doing that itself is a it's a is a part of floor plan the floor plan is for example let's say uh, let's uh, take an example of a home you, you uh, so home has uh, you, you decide the location of your uh, of your uh, sofas you decide the location of tvs that location of bathroom is fixed the location of cupboards so those things you already decide that is basically your that is a very good example of floor plan you can also take an example of a city let's say a city you uh, uh, before even building the city you uh, decide the location where the railway tracks will be there you decide the locations where 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 your uh, where your main uh, roads will be constructed you decide the location of your parks so all these are already decided so these could be the parks uh, the roads railway tracks this could be considered as pre placed cells these are like already pre placed and so yeah uh, uh, this is just a definition of pre placed cell that these ips will have user defined locations so and that's why we call it as pre placed cells and they won't be touched they won't be moved during your automating automated placement and routing uh, procedures uh yeah this is again i've given one more point that it mm, uh, the 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 automatic uh, placement and routing tool will will uh, place the, the the other logical cells around this pre placed cells but this particular area will be reserved for the pre placed cells so let's see how how do we play, uh, place it we'll take an example for example we have uh, three blocks let's say block a block b and block c and this has to be placed onto a onto a chip and let's say we also decided that uh, block a communicates more to the inputs block a and block c communicates more to the input side and block b uh, doesn't matter blo wherever block b sits it would sit at its center and 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 th these kind of specifications let's say we already decided so so this is how we place it let's say we place the block a close to the input input side so uh, in further lectures what we'll do is we'll we'll consider this we'll we'll place all the input pins on the left hand side and we'll place all the output pins on the, on the right hand side we'll we'll do that thing and uh, pre assuming that we'll be placing input pins on the left hand side and block a communicates more with the input side of the chip we'll place block a close to the uh, close to the uh, close to the input pin next block b we are placing at the center because we don't uh, because uh, the designer doesn't bothers whether block b uh, uh, is placed at the center uh, is placed close to the input or the output side so we place block b at the center and we are placing block c at the uh, uh, at the bottom side because, uh, again towards more to the le left hand side because this is again a design specific thing so uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll uh, yeah so these are your pre placed cells we are just highlighting them so in the next in the next uh, lecture uh, we will be uh, we will be introducing the next step which could be uh, which is like placing decoupling capacitors and all those things so we will be covering those in the next lecture and probably uh, uh, it will take uh, i think 3 or 4 more lectures to complete the introduction to physical design cell we'll we'll uh, have a look into it in the next lectures thank you